Good morning. Uh, this is uh, the, sec the, the lecture of the semantic web course on the web of linked data. Um, this is not uh, a lesson that has been recorded in the classroom because this morning I had technical problems. So this is uh, another version that has been recorded uh, later time and maybe it will be a little more co be more compact. Uh, what we are going to talk about now is a part of the semantic web stack uh, that has to do with uh, the web of linked data. That uh, The main part of this presentation has to do with SparkQL and we are based uh, on the data interchange format RDF uh, that we already have seen last time. Um, just to make uh, a resume, the technology web of data, despite the semantic web, consider semantic web and tends now to consider semantic web and web of data as synonyms, as only a subset of the technology that uh, are part of the semantic web and is focused on uh, um, searching data and put data on disposal for people that uh, want to make searches. And a part of reasoning and rules uh, is outside the scope of uh, the web of data as we consider now. So the first thing I want to do is to give you some idea of what is SparkQL. And then we will go on later on on the syntax and we'll do practical example using some web service. So SparkQL as a recursive um, name, ac acronym, that use again the name SparkQL in, in the definition. So SparkQL is, is called SparkQL protocol and RDF query language in sense that it has two different focuses. On the one hand, it gives you uh, the language syntax for querying RDF uh, triple stores. And also it is a protocol that um, give uh, inf information how to build application for accessing uh, RDF triple store. So it's uh, we have two version of the recommendation. The last one is uh, has been re released in, uh, in the 2013. But and uh, the main objective of SpyQL is to query graphs uh, uh, represented RDF. Uh, it can use uh, one single data source, but in general, it uses many different data sources. Mm. And the data are stored as RDF uh, triples or in other format, uh, and RDF is uh, get uh, through some kind of conversion via middleware. Mm. So you've seen that uh, the best way to understand what the RDF is, is use the graphic representation. Here we have an example, uh, but of course, when you, we want to expose this uh, RDF statements, uh, we have to have a machine readable uh, statement. And so the graph, the graph is not, uh, is not uh, useful. Uh, there are several ways to serialize uh, uh, RDF graphs uh, and the only one that is a W3C recommendation is RDF XML but has the disadvantage of being very verbose, somehow difficult to read, but even worse, there is not a single representation in RDF XML for the same graph. So it's not the best way to serialize uh, RDF graph uh, in order to query them. So the SparkQL uses another syntax that is called Tartle, which is an extension of uh, triples. Uh, here is um, an image uh, that show what are the different uh, relationship between the, the several languages for serializing RDF tr triples. So uh, we we, we, I don't, don't go into detail here because you've done already a lecture on RDF and so you've seen uh, what Tartle is. This is an example that you've seen uh, with Fulvio 
about a graph and here is the, the total notation that uh, exposed the, that shows the RDF triples uh, with statements that are the subject, the predicate and the object followed by the dot. The total notation is will be used in a part in a portion, uh, specifically the where portion of a Spark QL uh, query. That's why it's it's that important. Uh, then, of course, uh, Turtle can use, uh, can use a more compact uh, uh, syntax that you already have seen, have seen. So you have simple triples. They are triple that have the same subject. And uh, there is a way for abbreviated resources uh, expressed in URI that are the prefix. Here are some examples, but uh, this is something that you already have, uh, have seen last time. Um, the identifiers can be a complete uh, URI or can be a qualified name in the sense that uh, the URI is, uh, is abbreviated by using a na namespace. Uh, the namespace uh, is uh, practically the name of the vocabulary that uh, helps you to express uh, a certain type of property or a certain type of resource. So type, uh, the, or the type uh, is a property that belongs to the RDF uh, namespace, that is the RDF vocabulary and so on. The literals are constant, they are the, va the, the, the value, but also it's possible to express the language in which it is written, like here, is this British English, or also this uh, question mark means that uh, the preceding part is optional. Or also, like here, you can say that uh, what is the type, uh, data type uh, of, this, uh, of this data. So 1.4 is a decimal number, XSD stands for XML schema vocabulary. You've seen that it's possible to define blanks nodes uh, in, uh, in RDF and also in the turtle notation. Uh, here you have uh, an object that is an empty uh, blank node and here is how to express uh, the subject when the subject is a, name, is a blank node. Mm -hmm. It's possible to define collection in a more compact way than using the, the list uh, uh, the list way, so the list is a first uh, member and then the rest of the members and so on. Here is an example, but you've seen this already. Uh, what are triple stores? Uh, triple stores are databases that are specialized for uh, storing RDF triples, so statements in RDF, hmm? in RDF in turtle format. It uh, can ingest a variety of format, RDF, uh, and also com uh, RDF that comes from conversion from another format, and support a query language. So uh, there is a very good similarity between the normal relational databases that we are used to and the triple store. Uh, the data model is different. In one case, are tables that is relational data, in the case of triple store are RDF graphs. The instances in one, on the one hand are record, rec records in tables and in, other, in the other case are RDF triples. And the language to support query is SQL, on the other end is SparkQL. And uh, the indexing mechanism are optimized for the kind of uh, storage that, uh, that you need to have. So this is uh, a comparison. So this is uh, simple, the, the idea of what is the syntax of a SparkQL query. We have a prefix that is a mechanism to abbreviate URIs. This is the same mechanism that you already used in uh, expressing uh, 
turtle statement of, uh, in our RDF statements. Then we have a select that helps you to define what are the variables that will be returned by the query. It's the same select that we are used to in SQL syntax. And then we have the characteristic part. This is a query pattern. So the list of triple patterns that allows you to match a graph, an existing graph. For example, here, you can, the, the, the triple says that a certain resource, which in the URI is this one, example.soc, has a property title whose value is title, is unknown, okay? Everything that is as a question mark before means that is an unbound variable. That means that is a variable, it is not unknown. Here, you can read like that, please give me the title of this resource that I tell you as the subject of the triple. Uh, there is another um, part of the syntax that is the from that says which is the, what is the name of the graph that in general is, uh, is used only if you are going to use more than one graph. And in our, uh, in, for example, in most of the, ex of the example that we will see, uh, it will not be the case, but uh, you know that it, there's also this possibility. So the select uh, is, allows you to select the variables. Uh, the variables are string that are um, with uh, the, the question mark before, and you can select a number, whatever you like, of variables uh, that are separated by, by common. So here you select the name, here you select X, X, and, and the title. Uh, the most uh, interesting part is where, in which uh, that contains a set of triples. Each triple is uh, uh, composed of a subject, a predicate, and an object, and followed by the dot. That is uh, the same syntax as startle. And uh, here it stands for a repetition of, uh, of uh, triples. Mm -hmm. uh, subject, predicate, and object uh, can be um, different things. Uh, can be resources, qualified name, that means uh, resources with abbreviation with a namespace. Uh, can be blank node, can be literal, for subject and object, and, uh, and not for predicate, and also variable. So there is, uh, it's, it's possible to compose the triples uh, according to this, uh, to this syntax. Um, so the, the, the triples that compose the where part of the SQL, qu is a SQL query uh, may contain unbound symbols. That means symbols that are not real resources, but they are sort of variable. Uh, by binding the, sy the symbol, if it's possible, uh, you can select uh, subgraph in the RDF graph. If this bound is found, then the query returns the bound resources. Let's make an example. Here is a very simple graph pattern, generical, says that the subject has, uh, is linked to a number of objects uh, through a number of properties. Here, the subject is known, while the predicate and the object are unknowns. So they are unbound variables. Hmm? Uh, the triples in where define how to match this uh, generic structure with all the graph patterns that you can find in a graph. And you can find a matching graph, this is what you will display. Let's make a, a better ex an, an example. Here you have uh, a portion of uh, RDF graph in which there are resources, literals, and, uh, and properties. So here you want to say, find the categories and the values that have the certain uh, that matches the following graph. This means that I have to find a node, a subject, that has a value equal to something. 
and the same node x should have a property category linked to something else. So practically we have to find any node in this graph that uh, match this, this, uh, this characteristic, that is, I try to see if this is an X full slide, and I check if there is some property that is called value and category, but there is not, so this full slide doesn't match. Now I concentrate on this node, and I see if it matches. Okay, this node has RDF value, and also category properties that link to two different literals. So practically this is the val 100 and this is total member that is cat. So I've found one of the matching patterns which I express. This is one way of expressing, we will see that uh, a SparkQL query can return HTML or JSON or even uh, Excel uh, format and so you can read the results in different formats and store it in different formats. Anyway, it says that uh, the first returned uh, value is a total member followed by 100, but there is another for this the same node there is another matching condition that uses this RDF value and, of course, the same category. So I have this one. And I will likely have some more, some more because there are other RDF value uh, for this node. But then I go to another node and I ask if this is an X and satisfied. And it happens again because there is several RDF value and a category. So we also have this result, full, mem full, full members 10. Uh, another example is this one, in which I can choose to filter some of the results. Filter are conditions on the results. So besides the same condition that I had before, so it matches on the same node of the graph, I can say that I want only the, the results in which the, the node val is higher than 200. The only cap value that uh, survived this condition is this one, total members 200. So I can filter the results according to some of the conditions. The third example is more complex in the sense that it uh, has more uh, more patterns to to match. So there are the two usual usual. So this is an X. We already found this as an X. But then we want that uh, another node, AL, has a link contains to X. So we have to find if there exists for this X an AL node that satisfies this condition. We see that this uh, property is here. So, this is a good AL. And besides, we want that EL is also linked to another resource by the property linked to. And we have that. So, we have this X satisfied all the conditions that are here. And then we have, as a result, total, we want CAT, which is total members. We want the val, which is 100, it's here. And we want also the URI here, that is this one. And so, here it is. Then there are different conditions. If we say last time this X was acceptable, it's again acceptable for the first two triples, but there is no uh, contains match and that says this is not good for this, uh, this query. Let's go to the fourth example. The fourth example is the same as the, the one before, but shows that some of the triples can be put as optional. So here we have a, a part that is compulsory, that 
has to do with this part of the query and also this one satisfies the condition as we have seen before in example one and two but this part is optional that means here it's satisfied here no but it's not a problem hmm? and this one is a part of the result only if it's available otherwise can be left uh, blank blank like here so the result for the node uh, on the on the left is complete we have the category we have the value and also we have the uri here in the second matching uh, node we don't have the uri the uri but is already available and there is a blank place showing that this data was not available so this was an idea of what you do practically when you have a graph and you want to understand whether there are bounds in a SpikeQL uh, query to the RDF graph. But, of course, then later we will see uh, better examples on real data sets that show what is the syntax like. Uh, by the way, SparkQL have a number of other features. For example, you can remove duplicates, uh, writing select uh, distinct, like SQL. You can sort the results. You can limit the number of return results. Uh, you can specify more than data sources. You can specify data types and, and so on. There are many different possibilities hmm? and query types. Uh, before going into detail, because we want to do exercises, examples on the real data sets, we have to just to understand uh, what is to, where we can find meaningful data to, uh, to query. Because of course we can make uh, queries on the data sets that we already produced but it's like if we make a web page and then we uh, we make the search only for our web page we would like to make searches in the whole web in this case we want to query rdf triples that are comes all over uh, the world and from multiple data sets uh, the link data project has exactly this uh, this goal to make large amount of information available to everybody for for using for, for example for query uh, the logo w3c remind of that uh, that I, I told you last time but uh, th this box reminds of triples and the box is open uh, asking people to open their data to the to the rest uh, of the users the link adapter project uh, um, is uh, not a specification, but it's only a set of best practices uh, to provide people that want to share uh, their data a nice infrastructure that makes it easier to share this data and use the other data. Hmm. It uses four principles. The four principles uh, that are very, very simple, but uh, they, they hide uh, some complexity in that. Um, for example, you can name things uh, in any way, but if you name as a URIs, it's much better because they identify things in a, in a, in a unique way. And uh, also, it says use uh, HTTPI URIs because it's easier for the people to find them because they use uh, and also uh, if a URI has something useful in it uh, can, can be even a web page but even better RDF sentences and uh, it's much better because at this point uh, people when looking at URIs uh, can extract interesting information and to be used for SparkQL, for be used for reasoning and whatever and also uh, it's important that you, when you define your data sets you try to link your data set to other existing data sets 
um, do, not doing links to outside is like making a, a website in which all the links are only inside the same web. If everybody had done this at the beginning, the web wouldn't be the place, uh, wouldn't be the service that we already we did, we all know. This is an example. Uh, for example, I want to create uh, a graph in RDF, and I'm saying that uh, this person, whose name is uh, this one, uh, lives uh, close to Berlin. Okay, I could say, okay, this is Berlin. I can write my own vocabulary, the classical X, and uh, find I put an entry that is Berlin. Then I make a whole a page in which I do. I write some information about Berlin, but it's much better instead of reinventing a page of Berlin, uh, if I remind that, of course, DBpedia has a page, a resource that is called Berlin, that has a lot of so much more information than what I could write uh, in, uh, in 10 minutes when I add uh, a link to Berlin, and so, for example, DBpedia has links uh, that says that the population of Berlin is this one, and it, it is a city in Germany, and so on. So, if I write DBpedia using this namespace instead of my personal namespace, uh, people will be able to link these two data and extract extra information about Berlin much better than, to, than what I, I could do. This is another example that uh, speaks about, for example, the MacBook. Uh, there is a service, bestbuy.com, that provides data about uh, product offers. So, for example, he has his own namespace, BB, and talks about MacBook, okay, and says that uh, currently value is $1,200. Okay, but of course, an entry, a resource called MacBook or something similar, it's in the Apple data set. Mm -hmm. The Apple provides data about the product from the technical, Apple product from the technical point of view. So for example, says what is the title and so on, and much more information that here is not, uh, is not shown. If I add a link between two different data sets saying that with, uh, for example, for the OWL uh, namespace, that these two things are the same, then I'm connecting two different data set for this graph. And then I can have access to extra information, all the technical characteristics of an uh, Apple MacBook. Uh, Apple computer, and uh, in general, MacBook certainly has an entry in Wikipedia because it's a very known uh, thing. And therefore, there will be certainly a, a resource in DBpedia called MacBook. Again, I can say, well, I'm talking about the same thing. And then DBpedia, for example, says that the developer of MacBook is Apple Computer. Uh, this is a different uh, data set that has to do with statistical data uh, about waste, energy, usage, and so on. And also, Apple, most of the co important companies have resources are considered there. For example, where they are located on with their uh, CO2 emission. And then I can link also this information using, for example, not exactly the same as, but uh, if you're inter interested in that, see also this part. This uses, it's a way of connecting existing information. And the, this is the basic idea of linked data. Don't rewrite things or triples, but connect triples to add extra information, connect uh, more and more information. Uh, when you are looking for the best property or the best resources for uh, writing your RDF graph, you use, in general, namespaces that are vocabularies. 
choosing the right vocabulary that is able to express what you want to say about this resource means looking for and understanding what is the scope of a vocabulary okay for example here there are a, na a number of vocabularies like foth for person db for dbpedia and scores that has to do with tesauri uh, just to have you to have some ideas about vocab existing vocabulary we can mention for example friend of a friend that define classes and properties for representing information about people and uh, relationship or if you want to talk about software projects you can use this vocabulary that is called the description of a project uh, the Dublin core that I mentioned in my last uh, class well, is to do with describing generic resources for example um, defining its title or the author or the creation date uh, and the main subject and so on uh, there are vocabulary to represent content from online communities for pro blogs wikis and so on which is SIOC. Uh, there is uh, vocabulary to describe very interestingly very important how to you write a relationship within data sets which is called uh, inter vocabulary interlinked data sets uh, when you want to describe people in organization you can use the well-known v card and then we have the web ontology language to express a relationship that has to do with classes and relations and when you are talking about uh, thesauri that we have, they have uh, the main uh, classification scheme is the tree you have uh, you can use the scos vocabulary then of course you have you can use the rdf schema and the uh, xml schema data type so these are lots of vocabulary that you can use and uh, the idea is to find the best one to express exactly what you what you want to to, to, to express about a resource this is some guidance that you can check uh, but yeah not uh, just just an idea or when you have a, a, a goal what you can do so just to have you to give you an idea of how big is this uh, project the the link at open data cloud have a um, uh, that you you can find uh, on the web looking for linked data you can see what are the data sets that are connected together uh, this project started in early 2007 and this is one of the first picture that show what are the initial supporter of this uh, of this initiative uh, and what are the links so these are the data sets are uh, this, for example dbpedia and uh, the link uh, is oriented sh uh, showing in which direction there are the links so for example dbpedia uh, make uh, references links to geodata but in this case geo names uh, and doesn't make uh, the opposite link so this is the first graph uh, that was uh, addressed and uh, this is a list of the first contributors they were the, the first supporter of this uh, linked data initiative uh, we have information from dbpedia which is uh, the structured information from wikipedia that means that wikipedia is written for humans and dbpedia has almost the same information in a machine readable way that is in RDF then there are um, music uh, data from DBTune, music brains uh, geo names geographical data uh, you have to do with uh, literary uh, scientific literature or literature about reviews, uh, books, uh, data from US census and uh, word, factbook, word Factbook country statistics. These are the first. Uh, very quickly, this is what happened in September 2007, that is uh, after six months, there are many new data sets connected and a number of links uh, 
uh, added. And so on, February 2008, September 2008, uh, March 2009, becomes less and less readable. Here, they started to color the graph according to the main subject. For example, the blue is media. Uh, this one, it is also very large, is life science. Uh, um, then we have some government data that are here. Uh, publications are the, 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 the green and so on. Uh, September 2011, and the last one I found is from August 2014, and you see that you cannot read anything, and there is really lots of effort in that. That means that this, uh, that that people that are managing these data sets have advantages, real advantages in using this uh, this principle, and so they they, they are working on that. Um, just a few couple of definition and data set is a set of triples in RDF that are published. So in this uh, in these pictures, the data set are the circle, and we can define link set the the collection of the links that uh, that link um, the same subject described in different data sets. Again, here, and you can go to this web page uh, to see them, there are some statistics about what is the subject distribution for triples. That means uh, a very large amount of triples has to do with government. Uh, and the distribution of links, that is, what is about uh, the linking between two different data sets. And as you see, the government is, is much smaller but life sciences, despite as less triples, has lots of interest in connecting different data sets. And here we consider the syntax using some example on open data sets. Uh, some popular data sets that uh, can be used, you can use for, for querying are, for example, DBpedia, Wikidata, Geonames, and so on. Some of you interested in music, this one. Um, we are going to use example with DBpedia because probably it's the one that is, uh, it's very interesting, it's lots of information and, um, well, that's it. Um, okay, to make queries to a data set, we need um, to have an endpoint, a SparkQL endpoint, that is also called a SparkQL processor. It's a service that accepts and processes the queries and returns results in different format. So, uh, SparkQL, in fact, is not only a uh, syntax, we will see this, of course, but it's also a protocol that describes our SparkQL client talks to an endpoint. Mm -hmm. um, so an endpoint accepts queries and return queries in different format. For example, here we have an example of two different uh, SparkQL query, SparkQL query. Uh, editors that uh, works, uh, for example, on DBpedia. So here you can see that you are using the DBpedia datasets, okay? And here is the is where you write the query text, and uh, uh, here is the format in which you want the result, which can be XML can be a spreadsheet, can be JSON, JavaScript, Toro, RDF, XML, and triples, and lots of different formats. This is another example. Uh, here, this, the, some, the, pref the prefixes are more evident, uh, and again, but has less uh, options for uh, showing the results. So you can use the one, which one you like, whatever you like. Uh, 
Okay. So, endpoints, I've shown you two of these endpoints. Some of them are completely generic in the sense that you can use any different data set, whatever you want. Others, for example, here is are three examples for DBpedia, and, uh, but there are so many for any data set, usually as a zone. For example, uh, for curiosity, you can query data about Italian par parliament, knowing, for example, who were the deputies uh, for uh, in 1964, or query like that. Mm. Uh, we are using DBpedia because it's, it's interesting, has a lots of information, lots of RDB triples that come from about 130 Wikipedia projects, uh, mainly the English Wikipedia, but also the many language translations of DBpedia, then Wikidata, and so on. Uh, extra information are on, uh, on this link. Uh, the data are published uh, with the linked data principles, so everybody can use them using open standards. This is uh, the architecture of DBpedia, in which uh, essentially the idea is extract uh, triples and expose them in a triple store so that uh, a SparkQL endpoint can, uh, can use them. Okay, so let's go into detail uh, for uh, this, uh, the query structure. SparkQL query include prefix declaration, result clause that identify what information has to be returned, the query pattern, which is the kernel of the query, that says what you want to get from uh, the triple store, and also some query modifiers, for example, order the results, uh, re limit the results, rearrange uh, in some way, sort them, and so on. So this is uh, an empty query, which are the li list of prefixes, uh, the result clause that start with select, the query pattern that starts with where, and at the end there are the query modifiers. It's very similar to the SQL structure. Let's see an example. So uh, we want to find in Didikidia, if we want to say in, it, in, in English, we want to say, to, we want to find all the people that were born in Turin. So what we can say, we are going to we want to find, to visualize all the persons, so I have to define uh, an unbound variable, that means every person, that is in the graph like a subject of a triple that has a birthplace predicate linked to a resource that is called Turin. Mm -hmm. then the dot is the finish of, of the triple. That means that I have to find the correct, uh, uh, first of all, predicate to express what I have in mind, and in this case, the birthplace. The birthplace belongs to one of the vocabulary of DBpedia, that is DBpedia ontology. And uh, so I can say, express what I have in mind, that means I want someone as a birthplace, as, be, as was born somewhere. And then I'm looking for a resource, and DBpedia has defined most of the resource, or, well, most of the places in the world are in DBpedia. And they are, use the default prefix of DBpedia, which is this one, this column, before means that I'm using this prefix. So um, let's try to to see what happened here. Uh, okay, I have to cut and paste this uh, this query. I go into one of the of the services. 
okay for example this one and I say that I want the results in HTML I run the query and I don't find any person let's try on the other range because I did it this morning in the classroom okay in this case it works is the same then okay so here if is there is a, a list of persons that were born in Turin okay this person are resources that means that the you arise for example if I go to the first one I won't go to the web page about this person and there is written that is born in Turin by the way that's correct okay and then uh, okay so I can find a list of the person it's very strange that in the other case it doesn't work but I try again gives no result uh, okay I will try to maybe I changed without uh, okay the reason why I want to try also this one is because he has more result for there was some problem with uh, with the service so again I have the same list is written in a different way but it goes to the of course to the same resource and uh, here I have the HTML version but I can also say that I want uh, for example um, a spreadsheet version which uh, will allow me to uh, save the, fa the file for example now I'll open it and the Excel file is open and here I have the same for information in Excel or if I want it in RDF XML uh, format I run it again I see it in this format and so on okay okay so this is was an example of a very simple triple pattern that has uh, an unbound variable as a subject and as a known uh, predicate and a known uh, object uh, here is a different uh, query if I want to find all the places and the people that were born there this is an example of a triple that is an unbound a subject and also an unbound object here I want the place followed by the person that were born in that place let's try to to run this one also uh, let's try this one for example okay I I go here take some time to execute okay and here I have a list of places at least Kansas City, Missouri, and the person that was born there. And then if I go on, of course, there are many people that were born in Kansas City, then Aberdeen in South Dakota, and so on. And I can follow this link. I have the page uh, about this place. Okay. So this was an example of a triple that uh, has a to unbound variable uh, okay next example is for example it uses multiple triple pattern that by the way have the same that share the same subject here is list all the names and the birth dates of the people that were born in Turin here there is some there's written something else by the way it's here I write it here 
the first triple size that I want the person that has been this was born in Turin but and also I want the birth date and then I want to visualize the name and the birth date here but I don't want the person as a resource but I want the name of the person so the person is linked to the name by the predicate fourth name which I added as a prefix okay I go and this time I have this result this is the birth date and here is the name the name is a string that includes also the languages so this means that it is uh, written in English hmm? and also the birth include also the type of data the data type that is a date hmm? that's uh, The next example is here. I want to list the names and the birth date of the people that were born in, born in Torino using another syntax. It's the same, but I group the triplets. And also I can convert also data types. For example, here, I show you again, here, okay. The difference besides the syntax that is pure grouping, I'm writing that I want the name in a string format. Hmm? Let's see what is the, the difference. Here I get rid of all these other details about the strings uh, on the language and so on. So it's pure string. I convert this type into a string. I can make triples tra by traversing a, a graph, not only uh, sharing the same subject. For example, yeah, I want to find all the people that were born anywhere in Italy. And I'm writing that, uh, uh, it's here. So, I want the person and the place where he was born. I said that a person is, is bo was born in a place, and this place belongs to a country. And this country must be Italy, okay? I get the DBR as a different uh, vocabulary, which is resource in Wikipedia. So here, again, a person saw the resource. I will have a list of persons and places that are in Italy. Probably here it needs more time to traverse on the the graph and it says that uh, for example this person was born in Isola Delva this one in Massa Carrara Rome and so on Naples Catania Emilia Romagna of course uh, the idea of place is very uh, generic it doesn't say this is a city a region a province and, and, uh, and so on okay it's possible to limit the the number of results that you that you get by adding the limit uh, modifier so here is the same query in which i say that i want only the first 25 results so here it is Uh, I can use uh, also the order by modifier. For example, here I would name and the, uh, all the people that were born anywhere in Italy, let's say the first 25, sorted my name in descending order. And I put it here. Go. Now it's not a resource but a name the place where we were born and there are strange things, things about this uh, this name which you would expect to start with Z, Z but if I don't limit to 25 but to for example 100 you see that at some point they start the correct order this has something to do with the way that the triples were uh, were uh, let's say coded so now we have Z, Z uh, correctly. Uh, 
Example number seven has to do with filters. Filters allows you to uh, filter the results of a query according to some parameters. Uh, they use Boolean condition. And for example, this example show you how to find all the people that were born in Turin after 1960 in alphabetical order. So here it is. Let's go there. And uh, okay. So what you are saying, I want the name of the person, the date of birth, and also the resource, if you want. They know that they were born in Torino. I want the birth date. I want the name. And I want to filter for uh, the birth date that must be after 19, January 1st, 1960. Okay? So... And then I order by name, this, this time in ascending order. So, it's stuck. Okay. We have the... No, didn't work. For some reason... Yeah, it happened to me... After some time, there is no way, and uh, the browser is killed by the SparkQL endpoint. So I have to start again. I'm sorry. He had enough. I wanted the other one. Uh, no QL. Let's say if I can do that here again. Okay. Now it works. Uh, so you see the the name. I should have seen said string if I don't want this en, and the date of birth, and also the the resource corresponding to this person. Please note that I here. I have a comparison between uh, one variable and one literal and I have to define what is the type of the literal because if I don't write the, the type of the literal and I do the same thing, it can, don't find any result because this comparison takes into account also the type of data. So I have to pay attention in filters to understand what is the uh, the data type of uh, what is written in the RDF file. In this case, the birth date uh, is connected, of course, to a, a literal of type date. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here, here, there are some details on the SpyQL filters. Uh, the filter has an expression, the expression can be a comparison, you have to pay attention to data type sometimes, or you can ask whether is a type of uh, resource, for example, if it is a I eerie or if it's bound, let's see there are more details here. Uh, bound means uh, that uh, you can check if it's uh, bound into, into the graph, so it gives a boolean result. Uh, you can test whether there is a blank node or uh, eerie or is a literal. And then of course you can compare RDF terms that can be equal or different and that's it. When you have numeric and other types you can use more comparison type and then you can the boolean and or and the basic arithmetics. You can use uh, different uh, a combination uh, of these. Uh, this is another example which is a little has more uh, another filter. Here you want to say that uh, you want to find all the musicians that were born in Turin uh, with their description in English. So uh, by the way this is A is a shortcut for the predicate RDF type, which is very common, so it deserves a shortcut. 
and define a class of resource. Then we have, uh, so we want a person that he has a, is a musical artist. Uh, this namespace have a lot of different profiles of people, soccer player, musical artist, and so on. Uh, we want them to be born in Torino, we want the birth date, uh, we want the name, and also we want this description, hmm, which comes from RDFS command. But we want only the one that has a description in English. Okay, let's see the result of this query. And here we have a list of artists, musicians, with their uh, description in English and their birth date. Uh, in case, for example, we want a description in Italian, we only have to change uh, the, the, the language. And in this case, uh, you can see there are very few artists that have the description in Italian. Okay. Another filter, a little bit more complex. Let's check what we want to do. We want to find uh, all the musicians that were born in a country with a population higher than 10 million people, but not the United States. So uh, we filter here. So we, what we say is that we want an artist that has been birthed in a place. I write country of birth that I will show also in the query. And I know that a country of birth is a country. And I want that this country of birth has a population total equal to this unbound variable. Hmm? And then, of course, I have the birth date and the name. And the filters are two at the end. So the population must be higher than 10 million. And we don't want it, the country of birth, we don't want that is the United States. So this is that should work, hopefully, again. The web is under maintenance. It happened this morning too. Uh, at some point, it's uh, I don't know if it died. I will try to run with the other, but in general, it doesn't work anyway because we are accessing DBpedia, and the problem is common. Okay. So unless it works i will stop this recording and come back as soon as it is uh, work again so i'll continue later so now uh, the service is is working again so we can uh, it can do the query that before was not working so what we want to, to have here it is the the query all the musicians that were born in a country with a population higher than 10 million people but not in the united states so uh, the query is this one we have a musical artist and uh, we discussed it before so uh, let's see the result some time again <sighs> it did work before okay it worked let's see okay here it is so uh, here are the name of the person the birth date and the country of birth and also the population so everything is higher than uh, 10 million people if I put rather than 10 million people I 
put uh, yeah, 100 million people, so I added uh, a zero, you will see that there are much less country involved. So there are only Brazil, India, Pakistan, Nigeria, and, and so on, Japan, so the people with very high population, uh, according, of course, to the DBpedia. If I add another zero, so it becomes one, one billion, I think that only India remains. And anyway, uh, in China, of course. And uh, the United States are not in, uh, in the set in, in any case. So. Uh, the last example has to show the optional uh, pattern. Means that uh, the optional pattern, are tr the, the query tries to match the graph pattern, but it's, if it's optional, it doesn't fail. Hmm? So, for example, here we want to find all the musicians that were born in Turin and also show the image if uh, it's possible, if they have it. So, let's, uh, let's try this, uh, this last query here. Is that, uh, is this one? So, I have the name, the birth date and uh, thumbnail, so the link of the e to the image. Uh, and uh, here is the optional pattern. So uh, the person has a thumbnail that uh, is this one, okay? If I go, here it is. So for the people that have a thumbnail, for example, this one, you can go to the link and see its image if it works. Take some time. And as you can see, for the people like this one, Achille Simonetti, that has no thumbnail associated, uh, the query returns anyway the name and the birth, but there is nothing on the thumbnail. Go back. Just uh, maybe that's not very... Stop it. Just to see okay here it is the picture okay uh, if i had not put optional this uh, this triple i i try uh, what happens remember this person achille simonetti had no thumbnail but it appears appears anyway in results in this case if i change and i not don't put the thumbnail as optional it, uh, in case it works, uh, this name will disappear because it, it doesn't, if a, a person doesn't match all the different uh, triples, it won't appear in the result. Hmm? Take some time, I hope it will work. Let's try to do that on the other endpoint in case it works better the problem is with dpd again okay it worked it worked have you seen that this uh, simonetti doesn't appear uh, in uh, in the in the list and only the artists that have a thumbnail associated appear in uh, in the table of the results okay here's another picture that you it's not very clear but it's a picture of this artist Okay, so uh, these were examples of query that make you, you understand what is the express, expressivity of the tool and what you can do. The most difficult part, of course, is to find the right property, the useful property for expressing what you want to extract hmm? and find the, the vocabulary that, uh, that has this property available for you. Uh, the last part, but very quick, uh, is that uh, the triple store can get data not only that are native RDF, but also coming from other kind of formats that would be useful, for example, 
to have our RDF data from XML document, uh, HTML documents, or relational databases. And uh, many different uh, standards from W3C mainly uh, take care of this conversion. For example, Griddle or microformats uh, work on uh, XML documents, uh, RDFA is a standard for HTML5 document or XHTML document. And then here there is a bridge uh, between relational databases and uh, triple stores. Um, just an example. Usually when you write a web page, uh, you think about HTML, but not as RDF. And in case RDF, uh, decide to make triples, they are kept separate, which is not a good idea because, of course, they have to be managed separately and even though there are much overlap on the content. So one idea, that is the idea uh, that went to RDFA and other standards, is that if you are able to embed RDF into the web content with a standard, for example, IDFA, it would be much easier because they become the same thing. This is just uh, an example. RDFA is a recommendation that is quite recent, the last version, 2015, and uh, add a set of attribute extension for HTML5, XHTML, and some XML-based documents in which you can describe the RDF triples directly in HTML code. Let's see an example. Uh, by the way, the browser ignores the extra makeup. It uses um, the attribute, by, for example, adding this property uh, attribute and uh, type of attribute and so on. For example, it's always the triples are of a subject, and for example, here is a subject is specified um, with about, sorry, the unit price specification is the subject, and here is a list of properties of this subject, for example, has currency value, and uh, the property has, a, of course, a, a value, which is 29.99 in this case, and also a type. So the triple that you can extract is this is the subject, this is the predicate, and this is the object. Mm? And uh, the parser can extract uh, directly all these uh, triples from the HTML uh, code if it's embedded in there. Uh, Adifa is not the only solution. Uh, well, this is uh, a picture that shows other other uh, ways, for example, microformats. This is not a very recent picture. Anyway, um, the three main solutions are microformats, RDFA, and microdata. Micro uh, for example, microformats are the first one, and uh, they were used to format... Uh, 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 add markup but for specific categories of documents mm. for example using uh, specific class attributes for example you can say locality region uh, country name so for specifying in a better way what you are talking about and then RDFA, you have talked about it. Microdata is sort of a um, more general specification, uh, but very similar to microformats, uh, in which, uh, again, we use uh, attributes, but there are some specific uh, attribute names like item type and item prop and so on, in which you, for example, you say that for item ty type person, you have a property that is called name, and this is the value, James Cameron. Uh, so there are different ways to embed uh, RDF triples in, uh, in HTML. Uh, 
uh, another standard that has uh, to do with XML and not with HTML is GRIDRU. That means uh, greening resource description from dialects of languages, which is essentially the same basic principles but apply to XML. Thank you and uh, see you next time. Bye-bye.